Hello everyone. Last class I have discussed about thyristor fed control rectifier and the output voltage is fed to DC motor. Today I will discuss about chopper fed DC motor drive. Chopper is nothing but a DC to DC converter. Here the input voltage is fixed DC voltage and the output is variable DC voltage. And by controlling the variable output voltage, we can control the speed of DC motor. So let's see. Last class I have discussed about this one. Today I will discuss this DC to DC converter. DC to DC converter based DC motor drive. Here you can see in this circuit there is only one switch. DC input voltage. This is RLE load and that can be considered as a motor load. There is a freewheeling diode connected in parallel with this motor. Now this switch may be MOSFET, IGBT, thyristor based on the switching frequency and the power application. So here a transistor is shown. Here you can see collector to emitter current will flow whenever base current is present across this terminal. Now any switch generally has two modes of operation. Either the switch is on or off. Based on that one current and voltage of the complete circuit will change. Now you see if the switch is on then current will flow in this direction. Back to this. This diode will get reverse bias. Now as the load is inductive as L is there so based on the EMF developed across the circuit this armature current will increase. So you can see this is your on period of the switch and during this period the switch is off. Now what will happen let's start with voltage first. So when the switch is on at that time voltage drop ideally it is zero then this voltage is nothing but armature voltage that is equal to supply voltage. So you can see this armature voltage is equal to V. So this voltage you are getting till your switch is on. Now what will happen to the current? So current will increase slowly. So it is assumed that current is increasing from initial value IA1 to IA2. During this period voltage across the inductor is L into DIA DT and the polarity is top positive here it is negative. So when the switch is on armature voltage equal to supply voltage and current will increase from IA1 to IA2. Now what will happen if the switch is off when the base current is removed then inductor will try to find a path through which it can release its stored energy. So when the current through the inductor reduces then polarity this one changes. So at the time when the switch was on polarity across the inductor was here top positive here negative. But when the current will reduce then LDRT will be negative and top will be negative and here it is positive. So negative positive and at this moment it is assumed that negative positive is more than this voltage. So this net voltage across this armature we can say it will be top negative bottom positive. Then this diode will get forward bias. That means anode is connected to positive terminal and cathode to negative terminal. When the switch is off the inductor will try to release its stored energy through this diode. That's why this one is known as free wheeling diode. DF it is. Now when the inductor releases its energy or the current through the inductor reduces so here we are considering only continuous conduction mode that means continuous current will flow through the circuit or through the armature. Now, now we will assume that inductor is not completely discharged or the current is not zero. Again we will give switching passes to this transistor and switch will be on then again current will increase. So here when the switch is off at that time 
inductor current will reduce and it will reduce from IA2 to IA1. So this is nothing but initial condition. So this is off period. During off period, inductor current reduces. Now what will happen to the armature voltage? So at that time, when the inductor was uh, releasing its energy, then this diode gets forward bias. Because of that one, voltage across this RLE terminal or VA becomes zero. So this voltage is zero. And before achieving zero current, zero armature current, we are again making this switch on. So the same cycle will continue. So this voltage will be again VA and uh, armature current will increase from IA1 to IA2. So in one complete cycle, we can say that during on period inductor current increases from IA1 to IA2 then in the off period IA2 to IA1 it will reduce. Now what will happen to the inductor voltage during this period? Inductor voltage during this complete period or average inductor voltage will be zero. Assuming that whatever voltage developed across the inductor during on period that is equal to the opposite voltage developed across the inductor during off period. So the net voltage becomes zero. We will use this expression in analyzing this circuit. So let's see. So choppers are used to get variable DC voltage from a DC source. The transistor may be thyristor, MOSFET, IGBT or any other switching devices. And it is operated periodically with time period T and remains on for T on. So VAI are nothing but armature voltage and current and it is continuous conduction mode. The current is not becoming zero that's why it is continuous conduction mode. Now during one period we have seen that VA is equal to supply voltage, armature voltage equal to supply voltage. Applying KVL in the circuit. So apply KVL equation here. So V is equal to IA into RA plus L in LA into DIA DT plus E. So you see V is equal to RA IA plus LA DIA DT plus E and it is during on period. So T greater than equal to 0 less than equal to T1. In this interval armature current increases from IA1 to IA2 already discussed. At T is equal to T1 switch is turned off motor current fables through the diode and motor terminal voltage is 0. Now when the switch is off at that time again you have to apply KVL equation but this time this source is disconnected and this loop will be there. And in this loop, there is no source. This is back EMF. We will not consider this one as a source. But so the voltage becomes here zero. So we can write KVL equation again. Zero is equal to RAIA plus LADIA DT plus E. So this equation RAIA plus LADIA DT plus E equal to zero. And it is during off period. So armature current here decreases from IA2 to IA1. So now these two equations we have got already is equation number one and two. Now average armature voltage, it is nothing but one by complete time period. T is the complete time period. Then integration zero to T on. Uh, because only during on period we are getting the voltage. During off period voltage is zero. That's why the integration is zero to T on and the voltage is VA is equal to V. So it is V dt. And it is coming D into V. And here D is assumed as T1 by T. And it is nothing but duty cycle of the switch. So we can write IA is equal to. So this IA is equal to average output voltage minus E. This average output voltage minus E divided by RA. In this case we will not consider voltage of the inductor. Because I already I told average output average voltage across the inductor becomes zero. So average output voltage minus back EMF divided by RA is equal to your armature current. So IA is equal to dB minus E by RA. Now in case of separately accelerated motor already we know T is equal to K into IA and E is equal to K omega M. Using these two equations we can write omega M is equal to dV by K minus RA by K square into T. Just substitute the value of this IA here and E from this equation e is equal to K omega M just substitute here you will get this one. So omega M is equal to dV by K minus RA by K square into T. Now from equation 3 we can say that if you want to control the speed of the motor just change the value of this 
duty cycle so by changing the value of the duty cycle we can control the speed of the motor so that's why this type of drive is known as chopper fed dc drive and by controlling the duty cycle we can control the speed of the motor keeping other parameters like v this k r a t constant if there are two parameters that means torque also it is changing torque speed characteristics based on this duty cycle also can be derived so today we have discussed about chopper fed dc drive here we have seen that speed of the motor can be controlled by controlling the duty cycle of a switch and the average output voltage we have got d into supply voltage so it is nothing but a step down chopper fed dc drive because duty cycle will never go more than 1 or 100% so the output voltage or the average output voltage will be always equal to or less than supply voltage so it is step down chopper fed dc drive and by controlling the duty cycle of the switch we can control the speed of the motor thank you